Well, hello guys. Um, in this video, I want to share my thoughts on the Rolleye Remote Shutter Release um, with you. I'm using this one uh, for a few months now and I'm quite satisfied with it. So I thought it's time to make a short review video about it. The first thing we have to find out is when are you using a remote shutter button? Why not use the shutter button on the camera? For example, when you are taking really long exposure shots, like for example, um, let's say a few minutes to make the sky smooth, to make waterfalls smooth, um, then you will have noticed that the camera is limited to an exposure time of maximum 30 seconds. After that, the exposure will end. And um, so you're having a problem. That's the reason why you have to change the bulb mode on the camera when you're taking exposures longer than 30 seconds. And um, to be honest, doing that on the camera has two disadvantages because the first thing it, it's really ugly to press the button for let's say three to four minutes the whole time and while doing so you would shake the camera on the tripod and the image would get blurred. So this is why you're using a remote shutter with a cable attached to the camera. Um, you could also do it um, via radio for example but I decided to go for the cable um, variant because um, with a cable variant you don't have any uh, errors uh, with missing connections and some things so I decided to go for a cable uh, remote shutter. So um, this cable remote shutter can quite good be compared to the original Nikon remote shutter and um, if you have a look at the, uh, the, the this uh, shutter then you see that it's very close to the original one from Nikon. So. Um, yeah, I would suggest let's take a look at it, how it looks, how it's used, and uh, let's have a look at it in detail. So when we switch on the device now, we see that even the display is very close to the original Nikon remote shutter release. And on the display now you can see that we are in the delay mode. Now it displays the time for delay, which means it's the time until um, uh, the shooting starts. It's good to um, eliminate um, any movements in the camera or tripod and to wait a few seconds before you're starting with your with your shooting. Um, the next menu we have is to set up the time of the exposure which is now 40 seconds for example. Um, the next screen is for the interval. It means uh, the uh, yeah, time in between several shoots and of course you can set the number of shoots here um, we are now in the end display, displaying one uh, shooting at the moment. You can go up to 399 shootings uh, at all in total. The next thing you are able to enter is if there should be an acoustic signal or if there should be no acoustic signal. This is only displaying. Um, if you want to set something in these um, menus here, then you go to set and uh, now you can change the different values. Um, after you tip to the right, it goes in the um, time for exposure, for example, in the interval settings, just like seen before. And um, here, in, uh, next one is the number of shots and uh, the acoustic um, signal setup, for example. You can always leave the setting by hitting setting again and then you are back in the displaying mode and now you could start shooting. For example, with these um, things here, if you go to timer start and stop, then now the timer is active, it counts uh, the delay time and after this it will shoot the photo. It's making the acoustic signal you hear at the moment. Let's fast forward this. So, and now our shooting is finished. Um, if you don't want to use the uh, inbuilt timer or interval, you can also um, release the shutter completely manual by pressing down this button here. Um, so from now on, the timer is counting the time. It's actually shooting already. If you want to hold it, you can switch up this uh, hold button. And from now on, the camera will stay in exposure mode. And um, after you release it, the um, exposure will stop and your shot is over. So this is how you use this little thing. And um, all the things you can do here are exactly the same as in the original Nikon device. 
So uh, if you want to spend uh, a lot of money, then you can go for the original Nikon, but you can also save a lot of money when going for the Rolleye instead. There are of course some ups and downs with a Rolleye. For example, in my opinion, compared to the original Nikon remote shutter, um, the complete housing is not so good in the hand as the original from Nikon because it's uh, more ergonomic and uh, it doesn't uh, slide out of your hand so easy uh, because it has some rubber finish um, on, the, on the upside and downside of this one. There are also a few things you, uh, you can, um, yeah, you cannot be so happy about. For example, this battery case, yeah, it's, it's, it's stuck in the, in the housing. Of course, it doesn't fall off like some people say on Amazon reviews, for example, but um, this one feels um, much better on the original part from Nikon. Despite of that, you get a um, very good device. Um, there is, a, um, there, there is a curse and a blessing at the same time because the original Nikon uh, remote shutter has one single cable to connect it to the camera, um, which is a curse when you want to connect it to other cameras than, for example, my D500. Um, you can't do this with the original uh, remote shutter from Nikon, but with the one from Roller, you get an adapter for the uh, other cameras from Nikon. So you are able to use this adapter, for example. So you just have to um, disconnect the cable here and put this adapter in and then you can use it with all the other cameras. This is a pro for those who have other cameras, but it's also um, a little problem or let's not say a problem, but it has some downsides because um, this connection here can easily be lost if you pull on the cable. It's, um, it really snaps in tight um, but if you apply too much, um, too much dragging on the cable, then it could lose connection, for example. So this is a thing I'm always checking before taking photos, if this cable is really properly connected. Um, yeah, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. So um, in, in my opinion, it's okay. It, it holds the, the adapter tightened here, it's okay. But um, yes, of course, it's a possible source of error. So. Um, yeah, when it comes to numbers, then uh, the original Nikon remote shutter is uh, available for 150 euros and this one from Rolli I bought for 20 euros. So you're saving 130 euros if you uh, can live with a slightly, um, with a slightly different finish and ergonomics of this um, controller and if you can live with the uh, adapter here. Um, Despite that, everything is exactly the same, so I would always go for the Rolleye again. Uh, it's doing a good job. When it comes to batteries for the digital functions of this, um, of this um, remote shutter, you have two AAA batteries inside it. Um, they, are also, they come also shipped with a device. Um, when not using uh, batteries, I use Aniloop uh, rechargeable batteries because they are really doing a, a nice job. There is one thing that is missing, but it's missing with the original um, remote shutter release from Nikon as well. And it's the possibility to have a tripod mount uh, included. So Rolleye, if you hear me, please go ahead and use a very cheap um, mounting uh, unit, which you can fix to your tripod so that this one isn't uh, always hanging here. This would be a really nice feature which the original and many other third-party um, products lack. So this would be a really nice thing, but as I said, the original doesn't come with that feature as well. To make one thing clear, this uh, review was not bought. Uh, I bought the product myself, it was not sponsored. And uh, so it's really honest and I just want to uh, share my thoughts with you. Um, despite that, you can find a link to the product in the video description in the first comment. So uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, leave a comment if you like the video.